Hello, my name is Hartmut and today I'll show you how to build a full HD gaming monster which can score 10,000 points in 3D Mark Fire Strike for around 275 bucks. Now to achieve this, you might need at least some experience with building computers, but if you have that, you can easily build a similar PC for a similar amount of money. So the heart and soul of this machine are an Intel Xeon 6 core 12 threads E5649 processor, which usually boosts up to 2.6 GHz. But for this build, I overclocked it to exactly 4 GHz, even though 4.2 or even 4.4 can be achieved with some more tweaking. But I thought 4 GHz would be fine for 24 7 usage and it only cost me 20 bucks, including shipping. And you can easily find those for similar prices or even cheaper on AliExpress or eBay. You could also go for an X5650, which is very similar but unfortunately has a so called Uncore bug in combination with the motherboard I used. Now, back in 2011, when this CPU was released for 770 bucks, according to the Arc.Intel website, probably not many people would have considered this a gaming CPU, as not many games supported more than two cores or threads. But as today more and more games profit a lot from more cores or threads, these Xeons actually can get very interesting again. Their single core performance is probably weaker, to be fair, than the one of modern CPUs, but the multi core power for rendering and newer games is actually pretty good. Now, let's have a look at how I proceeded in building the PC around this CPU. The biggest problem with those X5000 and E4000 series is that they are socket 1366 CPUs and appropriate 1366 motherboards tend to be very expensive even in used conditions. But there are some cheaper entry level models like the MSI X58 Pro which I was able to get at eBay for 60 bucks including shipping. Those boards tend to have 6 RAM slots so you can get 12GB of RAM pretty cheap by using 2GB RAM sticks only and then they run at triple channel which is very good. I chose to go for 8GB consisting out of 4x2GB sticks of DDR3 1033MHz for my system and paid 33 bucks, including shipping. I made an awesome deal and grabbed a Noctua NHU12S CPU cooler on Germany's local eBay platform for only 20 bucks, including shipping. This allowed me to safely overclock the CPU to 4GHz without getting any temperature issues. Now as these days SSDs are ridiculously cheap, I've decided to go for a new one which cost me only 20 bucks including shipping. I've also picked up a used PC case including two older case fans for 20 bucks, which would do the job just fine and also help me to keep the temperatures down even after overclocking the CPU and the GPU. Now if you complain about the looks of this case on a budget PC with this kind of performance you're clearly watching the wrong video. Sorry. Now as for the GPU, I chose to go for a car that could reach 10,000 Firestrike points after some tweaking and costing me below 100 bucks at the same time, which left me with looking for a used GTX 780s. And I was able to score a Gigabyte WinForce version for only 76 bucks, including shipping on eBay. Actually, those aren't that hard to find these days for that kind of money. The downside for this GPU is clearly its hunger for power, so I had to look for a very strong PSU and started looking for 600 watt C-Sonic PSUs and also found an older but still very quiet one for 25 bucks including shipping on eBay as well. And it does a tremendous job at delivering the power I needed at an absolutely reasonable noise level and it even was stable enough to run an overclocked CPU and GPU. After assembling all the parts, I first overclocked the Xeon to 4 GHz and if you plan to build a similar system, I'll hereby share my BIOS values with you.
Please be aware that this specific motherboard, the MSI X58 Pro, has a so-called Uncore bug in combination with some of the X5000 Xeons, which will only let you overclock to around 3.6 GHz, which is why I went for an E5000 series CPU that wouldn't have this bug. Also be aware that the Southbridge and Northbridge chips of those boards tend to get super hot even more after overclocking, which is why I also threw in a tiny fan and placed that on the Northbridge heat spreader to keep those IOH temperatures below 100 degrees Celsius. And now back to overclocking, after finding a stable value I ran Cinebench R15 and Cinebench R20 to score up to amazing 910 points in Cinebench R15 and 1921 points in Cinebench R20 meaning that this would be a superb budget PC for any kind of rendering or video editing. To compare this to newer PCs, this would be even faster than an i7 6700K on stock speeds and close to an i5 800 6000K on stock speeds. I finally installed 3DMark and ran Firestrike, which scored around 9100 points at first, but after overclocking the GPU by 140 MHz on the core clock, and 440 megahertz on the memory clock, I actually managed to score 10,035 points with a graphics score of 11,397 and a physics score of around 12,000 points, which is absolutely amazing considering the total cost of only 275 bucks for the whole system. By the way, Unigine's Heaven benchmark scored 73.9 FPS and a score of 1861 on the Extreme Preset. So after these synthetic benchmarks, I wanted to see some real-world benchmarks and fired up some games. Please note that I ran all games at the graphics card stock speed, so overclocking would enhance the FPS by an additionally 10%. Starting with PUBG, I was able to get a great 73 FPS on average with a 1% low of 40 on the high settings preset. The game felt absolutely fluid and the frame times were great and stable as well. Please be aware that I recorded all games with GeForce Experience, which reduced the FPS by around 5-10%, to but of course I benchmarked the games without recording beforehand. The most recent hype, Apex Legends, scored an average of 67 FPS with a 1% low of 36 FPS on medium settings with anti-aliasing providing a playable experience while feeling fluid all the time and frame times were absolutely awesome and stable. Now Far Cry 5 scored an average of 51 FPS with a 1% low of 31 FPS on the high preset and is therefore perfectly playable for a single player game while looking absolutely great. Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Odyssey scored 52 FPS on average with a 1% low of 36 at the medium preset while looking very good and being perfectly playable for a single player RPG while providing acceptable frame times and very little stutter or performance problems. The super duper popular Fortnite ran with absolutely eSport capable 125 FPS on average and a 1% low of 62 FPS on medium settings combined with epic view distance. So this would even be enough to justify a 144Hz monitor and don't forget that overclocking the GPU would get you an extra 12 FPS and by further reducing the graphics settings 144 FPS are easily achievable. The Witcher 3, my favorite game to benchmark, scored an average of 59 FPS and a 1% low of 39 FPS on high settings with almost all post-processing options turned on. And I have to say that the 12 threads really, really pay off in cities as my old 4-core i5-3570K usually had problems of keeping the frame rate and frame time stable. But this Xeon really does work well with this game, looking great Geralt. Battlefield 1 scored an average of 65 FPS on average with a 1% low of 41 FPS on high settings on a 64 player server and around 77 FPS on average on medium settings. So you could actually choose between those two or a mix of both settings to achieve a frame rate you'd prefer. 
The experience was absolutely stable and without noticeable frame drops. By the way, the single player campaigns they run a bit ran a bit better with about 90 FPS on average. CSGO scored an average of 152 FPS with a 1% low of 82 on ultra settings. This might seem a bit low considering that even potatoes can rock this game, but that's kinda due to the lowest single core performance of the Xeon E5649, even though it is of course perfectly playable even on a professional esports level. And last but not least, GTA 5 achieved an average of 80 FPS and a 1% low of 54 FPS on high settings, with anti-aliasing and some extra graphic features activated. And because I was actually expecting more of GTA 5, I noticed that the GPU wasn't on the full load. So I actually deactivated the Xeon's hyperthreading in the BIOS menu and that gave me an extra 5 to 15 FPS, which actually also happens to other CPUs like the i7-8700K on GTA 5 as well. You can look that up on YouTube by searching for hyperthreading on off. So as a conclusion, this PC seems to me like a perfect budget machine for Full HD being able to run basically every available game on close to high settings or above at around 60 FPS or more. Some games run a bit slower, but as I said, by overclocking the GPU, you could easily and safely gain another 5 to 10 per FPS, basically always achieve the magical 60 FPS line. By the way, on full HD and medium or high settings, I didn't really run into problems at any time considering that this card only has 3GB of video RAM. But I've also noticed that for almost every game I've tested, the GPU was the bottleneck, meaning that I would say you could also combine this system, uh, this overclocked Xeon with a GTX 1060, 1070, 1080, or even better to highly improve the performance. Meaning that even though the CPU is from 2011 and we are on a DDR3 based system, there's still a lot of potential and headroom for upgrades, especially for multi-core optimized titles. And it's absolutely not a dead end yet, as multi-core optimization just gets better every year. Some alternatives for GPUs could be a GTX 970, which can be found quite cheap on eBay as well these days, or a GTX 1050Ti or an AMD RX 570, just depending on your budget. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you know what to do. Any thumbs up or subscriptions would be highly appreciated. Thank you, see you next time, bye bye.